Now this is some calligraphy artwork on Xuan paper. Uh, Xuan paper has been made by hand in China for some 1400 years. Xuan paper is very thin and flexible, uh, almost like tissue paper. We're using a mist of water to relax the fibers and get it very flat on the table. Now this is Li Hongdian. He's the master mounter that I've been working with for about 12 years. All right, fast forward. The paper has dried out a little and is going onto the hot press for about 30 seconds. Out of the press and onto the table for a quick inspection, and now it goes on to a layer of Xuan paper that we've previously prepared with heat activated adhesive. We're ironing this to laminate the artwork to this second layer of Xuan paper. The guy with the iron is Wang Shirdi. He's been working here for about six years. Now going to the cutting table, we'll trim off that excess paper and crop the artwork. This is the final crop for the artwork where we will make sure we have a straight and square cut. And again. This is Wang Wei. He's been working with us for over eight years now. I expect he's going to open his own mounting workshop soon, but perhaps his loyalty is the only thing stopping him. And I recently talked to him about this, suggesting he open a shop, but he says he's happy where he's at for now. This was his first job after graduating from the Chinese public school system where he started at age 16 or 17 here. In some cases, the artwork may have a rough edge or some kind of problem. This is the stage where we take care of that and trim away any of those problems. Now the artwork has been trimmed and we'll roll out some silk brocade cloth. We previously prepared this silk by adding a layer of Xuan paper to the back side. That serves to give the silk some initial body. The first cuts will create the side borders of the wall scroll. Next, we cut the top and bottom silk panels.
you can see the careful measurements to ensure these pieces are square, straight, and exactly the right size. This is some brown key line tape. We actually make this tape ourselves by dyeing some Juan paper brown and then adding some heat activated adhesive to the back. We use this key line tape to attach the silk side borders to the artwork. A gap is left to leave a line on the front side. This line will serve to visually frame the artwork. This is a nice extra step that gives the artwork a feel of quality. Some workshops skip all the key line taping that you're going to see here and just throw everything together. That may work for tourist trash and low quality wall scrolls, but our goal is a quality product that our customers will be proud to hang on their wall. So there's one side and a flip to the other side. This is one of those things that is done completely by hand and it's experience that gets you a straight line in the final product. Now, Wang Wei attaches the bottom silk panel. This is a high stress point, so it gets two layers of key line tape. The top panel goes on, again with a double layer of key line tape. Now these top and bottom panels will get trimmed to a final size later. The side borders and top panels need to be bonded together, so some heat activated adhesive is applied and ironed on. This adds strength and makes a low profile seam between the silk.
Now we need to create a flap or pocket where the wall scrolls roller will be attached later. An adhesive strip is added first, then a flap of paper. The process is similar for making a pocket for the wooden top frame of the wall scroll. Now we're going to bond all of this together while giving it some more body. This will be done by adding a sheet of Juen paper to the back. First, a sheet of heat activated adhesive is rolled out. This must be laid perfectly flat. Otherwise, you get bumps in the finished product. Now we pull out a ream of Juen paper and get out a single sheet. About 12 years ago when we started, these sheets would cost about 25 cents each. Now they cost over a dollar. This adds up quickly when you make a couple thousand wall scrolls per year. The paper size you see here is the most standard for artwork in China. It's about 68 centimeters by 136 centimeters. They call this size Suchi or roughly translated four-foot paper. This is from an old Chinese foot measuring about 33 centimeters or 13 inches. This is why you find most artwork in multiples of 33 centimeters. For instance, the calligraphy artwork we're mounting here is 33 centimeters wide and about 99 centimeters tall. We'll iron this starting at the middle and working towards the edges. If you're counting layers here, there's the artwork, a sheet of paper and adhesive added to that, and now a third layer of paper and adhesive. If you count where the key line tape is, there are a few more layers buried in certain places. Now we're back on the cutting table. It's time to do the final trimming of the extra silk and paper. By the way, the paper is too expensive to waste, so it'll go on the back of another smaller wall scroll later. We actually waste very little in materials and recycle even the smallest trimmings.
This is the final trim, so it must be straight and square. You see a lot of careful measuring here. Back to the ironing and assembly table, more keyline tape is pulled out, and this time we'll put a nice edge on the wall scroll. When finished, this will show some tape on the front of the wall scroll, but we'll also roll around to the back, sealing the edges. This way, the silk cloth will be protected from unraveling at the edge. It also gives the scroll a nice look. We use anywhere from 15 to 20 meters of keyline tape on a single wall scroll. So we make a lot of this tape in our shop. Now it's time to press the wall scroll. Each pressing is 30 seconds, so I think we'll fast forward about 10 times the normal speed. Otherwise, this segment of pressing would take 10 minutes. We stagger the pressing, so if the edge of one pressing is in one spot, the next pressing will overlap so we don't press in a crease. A final run through the press and back to the assembly table. We now have one solid laminated piece. Next, we'll measure the roller for cutting. We now use a cardboard tube. I used to insist on using wood, but we had some problems with warping and splintering wood. The cardboard tube is consistent and uniform. Another benefit is the cardboard tube is nearly the same strength at half the weight and a quarter of the cost of wood. This saves up to $10 in postage and nearly $10 in material costs on each wall scroll. Once mounted, it's visually impossible to tell the difference. We save our customers up to $20 on each wall scroll, which is a huge savings. Of course, we still do offer wood by special request, but that's $20 extra. Off to the Swedish-made Nobex miter saw, where we'll cut the top frame and roller.
Now you can see the tube is kind of unfinished here. This is one of our wood knobs going in. You can see a little bit of cardboard tube would show around the edge. So we want it to look like this. We add some key line to hide that and give it a finished look. When finished, it'll look like this on the front side. And here's the back side. It's a lot of effort to add this key line to hide what is basically one millimeter of cardboard, but it's worth it. After being disappointed with the quality of wooden knobs on the market, I now design and make my own wooden knobs. The knobs are secured with three nails here. We tried glue and other methods, but a tight fit of our proprietary knobs and three nails per knob works out the best. It's time to add the wooden top frame. There's a few strips of reinforcement added since this is a high stress point. We apply some adhesive strips first and then the wood frame is added. The flaps are wrapped around and the seam is hidden with some key line tape. Wall scrolls are delicate by nature, but we try to make them as strong as possible. If you take good care of your wall scroll, it can last for decades. We actually have some wall scrolls that have been hanging in the same place for 10 years. They still look great with just some occasional dusting. All you need to do is keep pets, children, and direct sunlight away. Once in a while, maybe touch it with a feather duster. This next part is often misunderstood. This tan strip of paper being added to the back is actually a label for the wall scroll. This has been done for centuries in China. It just gives you a place to write the title of the wall scroll. In the past, this helped gallery owners to identify which wall scroll was which. When you order custom calligraphy from us, the title of your calligraphy and your order number is written there in pencil. Now some strips of adhesive are added to these flaps for the roller. Special care is taken here as the roller must be perfectly straight.
As usual, the seam is hidden with some key line tape. The wall scroll is almost done. Just missing one element. That, of course, is the ribbon. This is what you're going to use to hang your wall scroll in your home, office, or dojo. We use nail-in brass eyelets, measuring to make sure the eyelets are the same distance apart for symmetry. using an ample amount of ribbon fed through the eyelets and tied off here. And a final knot in the middle that will have two tails protruding. Some people like to let those tails lay flat in front of the top silk panel and others like to hide them behind the wall scroll. <laughs> now here's the wall scroll ready to roll up and ship. 哎，好看。